In this video, I'm going to share an example of what a 2,000 calorie meal plan looks like to lose fat and get your summer body. And if you're part of the free 14-day summer body success system, welcome to day number nine. Now, be sure to watch this video all the way through to the end because I've got a surprise for you guys. So first off, why 2,000 calories? Another thing special about that number, that's just the amount of calories that I need to consume to lose 1% of my body weight per week, which is 1.5 pounds. So that is a 750 calorie deficit for me personally. Uh, you need to reflect back on video number three to walk through the numbers that you want to aim for in order to hit the weight loss target that you are aiming for each and every week. And it's also important to reflect back on video number three and video number one, where we talked about working with your own natural eating tendencies, trying to improve upon your own natural eating tendencies. So the foods that I'm gonna be sharing in this video, the meals that I'm sharing in this video, are all meals that I love. These are the foods and meals that I'm gonna consume throughout the year, no matter if my goal is fat loss, maintenance, or muscle building. Also, the, the only thing that's gonna change is the, the portion size that I'm consuming. Uh, what suits me best is four meals per day. You may be better off consuming three meals. You may be better off consuming five meals. You may want to have some little snacks in there. So work with your own natural eating tendencies. There's nothing magical about the foods or the meals that I'm consuming here or the number of meals that I'm consuming here. This is just me doing what allows me to thrive each and every day. And you're going to notice like for me personally, I like consuming the same amount of calories each and every day. I like to, it's just consuming the same amount of calories and in the rough um, macro ratio. I don't aim for certain macros. I just naturally tend to fall 40% uh, carbs, 30% fat, 30% protein. Um, ballpark area, a little up, a little down some days, but um, I finally, I naturally hit that range. So when I am keeping those macros pretty consistent and my calories pretty consistent each and every day, that allows me to sustain my energy, not only through the day by consuming those four meals, but each and every day through the week. So that just is what I have found works best for me. You can find what works best for you. So as I mentioned again in um, video number three there, which, uh, and video number one, I believe, is that um, structure is really important as well. So I have some go-to meals um, that I keep pretty consistent. So it really makes tracking super easy for me. And it also makes weaning off tracking super easy for me. So when you get pretty consistent with the meals and the foods that you're consuming and you have that heightened sense of awareness to the safety levels um, after each meal, how much energy you have. It's very easy for you to wean yourself off of tracking after this 14 day summer body success system is done and over with. Or maybe you wanna continue with it for two more weeks just to keep make sure that your eyeballing and your awareness is still heightened so you roll with what's going to serve you best. But know that tracking is just meant to be temporary. It's an educational tool um, that can be very, very eye-opening. So that's why I encourage you to do it for at least this 14 days here. So again, structure is important. And the first three meals that I have most days are the same. So I start off with a breakfast shake, one cup of homemade kefir, one cup of vitamin sweetened vanilla cashew milk, an ass load of spinach, and a banana, along with a scoop of protein powder in there. The kefir, I love for gut health. Uh, spinach, I love getting the veggies in there. It is an ass load of spinach. Uh, I try to get veggies in each and every meal that I consume and have some fruit throughout the day as well. The kefir is great for my gut health. Um, I lied. The first thing I have in the day is two cups of coffee with just a little bit of unsweetened vanilla cashew milk in there. So we're looking at maybe 1500 calories, sorry, maybe 15 <laughs> calories coming from that. So I have my coffee and then it's usually about an hour later when I have this breakfast shake. Um, then I get up for my walk with Chief. And then um, my next meal is my pre-workout meal. It's just about each and every day, I'll have four free range eggs from my friend's local farm. Um, sprinkle in some pink Himalayan salt, ground black pepper in there. I have some veggies along with that. Um, oftentimes I'll either steam or put them in the air fryer, some broccoli and cauliflower. Not my favorite veggies, but um, when I put them in the air fryer, I think they taste really good. Sprinkle on some, some seasoning on there. And again, it adds more flavor. And I just know those veggies are really good for my male hormone health. So I include them in there, even though they're not necessarily my favorite I still enjoy them, especially with the seasonings on there. Um, so along with that, I'll also, ha and sometimes I won't have those veggies on the side. I might um, dice up a pepper and throw in some spinach or some green onions and different and tomatoes and stuff into my an omelet instead of having 
just scrambled eggs and the veggies on the side. Um, and also have the bowl of two third cup oats, 140 grams of frozen mixed berries in there and some cinnamon sprinkled on top. So this is a very satiating meal. It's high volume with the veggies, the proteins in there, the, the fiber from the oats in there. So this really fills me up and satiates me. And I usually have to wait 90 minutes to two hours before I hit the gym after this meal. Um, so it provides me this great, great fuel, not only to get through the workout, but it's like that food is digested in my system. That's what it's going to use to repair, rebuild, and grow my muscles afterwards. Post-workout, I usually have some Greek yogurt and 140 grams of frozen mixed berries. And oftentimes I'll have uh, some a sliced pepper on the side there. Again, like I said, I try to have some sort of veggie with each and every meal, micronutrients, great for me sometimes if i'm like in a rush getting out the door in the morning i don't have time to even though it's effortless for me to to get that greek yogurt and all that stuff going i might be like really scrambling i may go to um the the local store after the workout and grab two um, daryl's bars which ends up being just a little bit higher in calories because like the greek yogurt's only about 300 calories it's um i'm not i'm still feeling satiated from that second meal there so i don't need a lot of fuel in me. I want something in me, but I don't want a big meal in me. So this is going to satiate me, sustain me until dinner time. But those Daryl's bars are, are, are a treat. It's something different on the go. I'll grab those from time to time. And again, like I may meet up with my buddy Joe or another friend for, for coffee. So if I have a, a latte or something that's 130 calories, I need to account for that. I need to count that the, the Daryl's bars were a little bit more than the Greek yogurt. Um, so I'm swapping things out. I know I'm going to have to eat just a little bit less at dinner time there. So I work with that. I'm flexible. I have some structure in place, but I allow myself to be flexible. I'm aware of the calorie intake and I just make some adjustments either as the day goes on and with, with my upcoming meals or throughout the week to account for that. Uh, dinner is where I get my variety. I have fish most days of the week. Absolutely love salmon. I usually have salmon twice a week. Um, love cooking it on the smoker. Oftentimes I'll just put some seasoning on top. Sometimes I'll put like a really light maple syrup glaze on top, which isn't um, many calories there. It doesn't add too much calories to that. Um, and along with the, the salmon, I will, well, other days, so I usually have that twice a week. Another day I might have uh, rainbow trout. Another day, I'm, or I might have um, like a tuna steak there. And tuna steak, I like to like pan sear it like less than a minute, maybe even 30 seconds each side uh, with some seasoning on each side, some cinnamon, sorry, cinnamon, some uh, pink Himalayan salt, some ground black pepper and fennel seeds is what I really love with that. A little bit of olive oil on the pan there. That is absolutely freaking delicious. So when I'm having the fish, I'm usually going to have, actually with most meals, like sweet potato or rice are kind of my go-to starchy carbs. Um, and I will have a veggie with that. Usually Brussels sprouts, baked Brussels sprouts or asparagus. Now those two, I freaking look forward to every freaking day. I love those veggies there, especially the baked Brussels sprouts. Baked Brussels sprouts with sweet potatoes. Oh my God, it's like freaking candy. Um, now the thing is like with fish, um, with chicken, with any kind of meats there, I'm gonna have to adjust the, the amount of rice that I'm consuming or the sweet potato that I'm consuming based on like the size of the filet. It's not like I'm going to um, the market and I'm order, ordering some salmon. I'm like, dude, like I want six ounces of salmon, like right on the money there, eight ounces of salmon. Like, so some, it's like whatever they, they've got there, they weigh it, it is what it is. I'm like, okay, I need to have a little less rice today and, and just kind of balance things out because of the size of that cut of meat. Same thing when it comes to chicken or pork or anything along those lines. And that brings me to another typical meal, which is a chicken fajita bowl. Uh, so I'll just dice up that chicken there, a little fajita seasoning, put it on a bed of rice. And um, usually I'll dice up some pepper in there. Sometimes I'll use like broccoli and cauliflower because when you blend it in with all other stuff, I enjoy the veggies, those, those veggies in that dish uh, prepared that way there. So again, depending on the size of the chicken breast, I have to adjust the amount of rice that I'm consuming there because I'm really looking at the total calories for the day. Uh, with the, I, I love, um, lightly, lightly breaded pork cutlets. And oftentimes when I make those, I'll have um, a yellow potato. I love yellow potatoes as well. Kind of making some homemade fries with them, just slicing them up, sprinkle a little salt on them, put them in the oven and bake them there. Freaking heaven to me. So uh, all foods that I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy. So again, a sturgy carb and a veggie with the dinner. I rotate through, through those things. Sometimes I'll have pulled pork. Sometimes I like, I do enjoy some red meats as well. So 
Taco Tuesdays often with my kids. I'll just uh, fry up some ground beef. Sometimes I'll ground turkey is another good one as well. So mix in some stuff there. Sometimes I'll make like a shepherd's pie with ground turkey and sweet potato there. Might put um, some corn, maybe some cream corn in between there. Nice little treat. Again, always balancing things out. Kind of have the idea of how many calories are going to be in my dinner meal. And if I have to have like a little less oats with that second meal, maybe three eggs instead of four, um, maybe three quarter cup of the, the kefir instead of the whole cup there. Little things I'll adjust throughout the day to kind of balance out for the evening. So again, having that flexibility and having the flexibility and knowing that sometimes I do enjoy dining out. So if I'm going to go out uh, with some friends, I always kind of overestimate the calories that I think are going to be in that meal. So even if it, I have a, an idea, it's probably 700 calories, I'm going to estimate like a thousand. I'd rather overestimate than underestimate. If it's actually a thousand and I think it's 700, then I'm like, why am I not losing weight? Well, I was consuming 300 calories more than I thought I was consuming. So I'd rather overestimate when I'm, I'm dining out. So again, I have that flexibility. And again, sometimes I may want to have um, an alcohol beverage when I'm out as well. I kind of keep that to a minimum when I'm in fat loss. I keep that to a minimum in general. I'm not, I'm a pretty light drinker. And when I do drink, it's like one or two uh, at the most typically. So um, again, work, I can work that in. You don't want to be, again, I like to, how I'm eating while I'm losing fat is going to be exactly the same as I'm eating when I'm maintaining my weight or trying to build muscle. It's just going to be the portion sizes of the meals that I'm consuming that are going to be larger when I'm in maintenance mode or in muscle building mode there. When I have those extra 750 to 800 calories to play around with when I'm no longer in fat loss mode, not only do I get to have larger meals that I'm consuming, but if I want to have, like when I'm going to the cafe with, with my buddy Joe there, like I can have that latte and not worry about it. It can be an extra instead of a swap out there and I can have a little dessert from there. I can have dessert anytime. And, and that brings me up to the, the bonus here that uh, I wanted to discuss. So um, I'm always, anytime I've gone through a fat loss phase, whether it's a mini cut or a 12 week fat loss phase, I'm always documenting my journey. So uh, as a bonus to you guys, I'm going to share the full 28 day mini cut diet that I followed every single meal that I ate. So really gives you guys some great insight into what it's like for me to consume 2000 calories per day consistently throughout eating nothing but whole natural nutrient rich foods. I didn't go in with that intention of just doing that. I told myself like if I wanted a treat, I was going to have a treat, but it was just after the holidays and each day that passed by, I just had no desire for any kind of processed foods and my energy was through the roof. So in large part, staying consistent with the calorie intake of 2000 calories a day, but also providing my body with the fuel that allows it to thrive and perform my best. Now you contrast that to the 12 week meal plan that I followed when I lost 20 pounds during a 12 week transformation seven years ago, I believe it is now. It's either seven or eight years ago. It's the last time I've had to go through a 12 week fat loss phase. It's only been like short mini cuts ever since there. I keep my weight pretty steady between like five, 10 pounds is the most I've been up in, in, uh, uh, through a, an 11, 12 month muscle building phase. Actually, that's a 14 month muscle building phase when I gained upwards of 10 pounds. Um, so I keep my weight pretty stable. Now I don't like lengthy cutting phase. I just keep it to mini cuts. Um, so in that 12 week meal plan, which I am again, including down below here for you guys, you'll see that every Friday night as out with the guys. And uh, I knew I was prepared for it. So I would save a lot of calories that I could consume in that evening. I could have some alcohol. I could enjoy some chips, some peanuts, some pepperettes and all that stuff. But I knew the rest of the week, I really had to buckle down and consume fewer calories. So it was, instead of 2000 calories each and every day, it was like 1700 calories. And some days even 15 to 1600 calories, just to make sure that I'm hitting my 14,000 calorie weekly target there. So, um, and you'll see that each and every day I included a treat. I had like Lindor chocolates, I had cookies, I'd have ice cream. Um, I, if I wanted a treat, I was going to have it and I worked it into my calorie target for the day and for the week. So you see how my nutrition evolved from seven years ago where I was having treats every single day, I kind of felt like I needed it to where like now I'm mostly whole natural nutrient rich foods. If I want a treat, I'll have it, but 
my body kind of craves the whole natural nutrient roots foods for the most part. So that's, uh, that's my little gift surprise to you guys. Two different meal plans from my past that have worked for me. And again, it's important for you to work with your natural eating tendencies. Eat the number of meals that suits you best. Eat the foods that are best for you. And like I have done, continuing to improve, continue to learn and grow what's going to serve your body best and being flexible in the process. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please me a huge favor and smash that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. If you want some more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that alert button so you're notified each time I upload a video. If you know a fellow bro who would benefit from watching today's video, please do my favor and share it with them. But more than anything, I'd love to hear from you down in the comment section below. Share your thoughts, your insights, share your feedback, and any kind of meal plans that work best for you. How many meals per day suits you best? What's the calorie target you're aiming for? How many pounds per week are you aiming to lose there? Just share your experiences with us so we can all learn and grow together. Have yourself an amazing day. I'll catch you in the next video.